So let's talk now about 10 discipleship disciplines. When we say come and see Christianity, this again is a multifaceted journey with Jesus. It will involve the head, the heart, and the hands of every Christian believer. It will involve guiding principles. There will be universal truths, and yet there will be a, a recognition of the individuality that God has designed, that we are a family of God whose unity is best expressed through our diversity. It is the diversity of God's people that are seen in the unity of God's people that gives God the greatest glory. You see, it's our disciplines that define us. At the DNA level, it's the disciplines that are lived out that express our faith and our fruitfulness as followers of Christ. And so I just want to prepare you, and again, there'll be deeper dives into these truths, but I just want to give you a framework for Christian disciplines for development. And you'll notice again that there's crossover here in much the same way that what we might share with and uh, perhaps pour into a lost person is in large part similar at times to what we would share with and establish and reinforce in a new lover of God. Well, there's also some carryover and crossover when it comes to Christian disciplines in the process of discipleship and development. Uh, let me give you an example. The purposes of the church, if, if you were to study the book of Ephesians, for example, you would find that there are clear purposes for the body of Christ. I've used the acronym P-SWORD for prayer sword, that uh, we've got P-S-W-O-R-D, that the P stands for prayer. Prayer is one of the primary purposes of the church. S is for service. W is for worship. O is for outreach. R is for relationships or koinonia. And the D is for development, what some would say is discipleship. But I would say to you, all of these together constitute discipleship. Well, those are purposes for the church. Now, some of those are also spiritual disciplines for the Christian. But for our purposes, when we focus on the developmental discipling disciplines that we want to encourage for every believer and then grow at different stages of spiritual life, I want to just encourage you to take a look at this and think of it, this list of 10, as a puzzle. See how the disciplines come together to strengthen the whole that is the Christian life. Number one, it's the Bible. See the use of the Bible and our relationship to it as one of those essential spiritual discipling disciplines that you and I must walk in God's word. That number two, there's worship. Three, there's prayer. Four, there's evangelism. Five, there's learning. Six, serving. Seven, fasting on occasion. Eight, it's biblical stewardship. Number nine is writing or keeping note of what God is doing in your life. Some would call it journaling. And then lastly, it's taking time to be alone with the Lord, to having times of spiritual solitude, to find your prayer closet, your tamion, or to find times to just get away with the Lord. For some, that will be in the morning before we go to work. For others, it'll be during lunch in the middle of the day. Others, it'll be sporadically as the Lord leads. The important thing is to take these 10 disciplines and recognize them as developmental tools and essentials that God and His Word have. He's made it clear that this is to be built into the life and the ministry of every believer. It'll help us to be holy and healthy. It'll help us to be holy and healthy helpers of others as well. Amen and amen.